www.sunstrategy.com. Hi, this is Chris again looking at the Tuesday, July 29th economic calendar for our trading day. As you can see, no high level announcements coming out during the day, but there are a couple things worth looking at. Uh, for example, the Japanese small business confidence number. Not a major mover typically, but uh, let's get an idea of what's going on with the Japanese economy could certainly have an effect on the Nikkei, which has broken out. So that being the case, the Nikkei may be an interesting place for buyers to step into. Uh, after that, we have uh, a couple of uh, what I would consider to be relatively minor announcements out of the UK involving mortgage approvals and the like. Uh, we also have the M4 money supply that can, if it's uh, more exaggerated than anticipated, move the currency markets, specifically the GBP slash USD pair, of course. And uh, as a result, that could be a market moving event, but more than likely is only going to be based upon uh, something being a major surprise. If it comes anywhere near uh, what's expected here, then uh, really should be a non-factor. The uh, Case-Shiller Home Price Index, uh, that is something that is followed uh, by the stock markets, specifically in the United States. So it could have an effect on an already somewhat bullish or at least well-supported looking uh, stock market. Uh, all of the indices over in the United States all look like they're ready to kind of bounce from where they're at. So it's very interesting to see that the number comes out during the day. Industrial production year over year comes out in Japan. That's probably going to be the biggest announcement of the session, which of course will come very late. That is a Nikkei related event again. So uh, probably the Nikkei and maybe the US averages will be the ones that could be greatly in, uh, greatest influenced uh, during the session on Tuesday. That being said though, keep in mind that this is a non-farm payroll week. So really, the most important economic announcements don't come out until Friday. Looking at the charts, we go to the FTSE first, and you can see that we had a back and forth session uh, during the day uh, on Monday and really didn't uh, see much uh, kind of come of the session. So really it appears that when you look at this chart, uh, I, I still see the 6760 level as a minor support level. We could get a little bit of a bounce from here. I do ultimately believe that we come back up here towards 6900. So uh, buying on pullbacks will probably be the way to go. Uh, short term charts might be a little bit more indicative of uh, what's going on in the market. So uh, that might be where you find the pullbacks to find support in order to go long. The British Pound, as you can see, had kind of a funky day. We rose during the day and then pulled back to form a little bit of a shooting star. We're still within uh, the cluster here, so really I kind of call it a non-event day. Uh, with that, a move back above 170 would be bullish, would continue the uptrend, and uh, have me aiming for the 172 level, which of course is uh, a bullish sign and would have um, uh, calls being uh, probably the uh, you know, bought up in mass, so to speak. You can make a little bit of an argument for an uptrend line here, so we'll have to see. Uh, breaking the top of this would not only break the 170, but it breaks the top of a shooting star. So those both are uh, very positive signs if we get them. A breakdown from here, I still want to see maybe the 169 level clear just to be a bit on, you know, on the safer side. The trend's still up. It's been kind of ugly here lately, but uh, really when you look at the totality of the recent move, that's only about 50%. And certainly from the bottom here, it's, it's nothing. And looking here at the euro dollar, you can see that we uh, have tried to rally during the session on Monday, but just really can't. This is another one of those short term opportunities. Every time this market rallies, I'm looking to sell it. I'm looking to buy puts uh, to, to bet that it's going to go lower. It should continue on any signs of resistance. Uh, I would be a seller of the euro dollar. And I think that we're still heading down to the 1.33 level, which is a much more important support area. Over at the dollar yen, you can see we had a slightly positive session. We're still finding a little bit of trouble at 102. 
uh, which is essentially fair value. I have 103 and 101 being the important market uh, levels and 102 being fair value. It's right in the middle. So uh, that being the case, uh, the market is kind of in no man's land. So really, I know this is a major pair. I know a lot of you like trading it, but quite frankly, this is probably one that's best avoided since we are right here in the middle. And let's not forget, again, with the non-farm payroll numbers coming down on Friday, this is a market that moves quite drastically off that number. So it wouldn't surprise me at all to see nothing happen over the next couple of sessions. Finally, looking at the S&P 500, you can see that we had a nice hammer form during the session on Monday. We fell right to the bottom of this channel bounce to form to hammer one of the more positive candles you can see I still see uh, just above here at the 2000 level as a resistance but like I said the other day I thought that perhaps we'd come back towards the bottom of this channel find some support and continue going higher that looks exactly uh, what's about to happen any move higher should be uh, followed through on an attempt again to get to 2000 whether or not we break out probably not uh, not before the non-farm payroll numbers, but if that number were to come out very strong, that could in fact be the catalyst. So we could be lining up right now for a big move on Friday, potentially. Either way, I am positive in this market. Pullbacks should continue to be buying opportunities and short-term trading uh, opportunities to the upside certainly are presenting themselves now. And that has been a look at the upcoming July 29th trading day.